Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats and King where we will discuss books, both new and old I will share with you pictures of my cats, will make you wish they were your cats and I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching I plan to prove that one in this particular case with this mug put it directly up to my head um, for comparison, I'd say I have a slightly above average sized head, so this is definitely a slightly above average sized mug. My shirt is one that you guys have seen many times before, it's just my classic Twilight Zone shirt. Man, I hate this, uh, this whole setup that I have going on here. I'm hoping, uh, now that we're back from this vacation, that I can get some work done here at the house and set up my official filming space. Uh, because of this is it's boring. I don't like it. Doesn't represent my channel. I feel like I need to get the old uh, the old backdrop out and get all that set up. So I'm trying to work on that uh, sometime this week. Get that going for you guys again. Uh, it's aesthetically much more pleasing than looking at uh, you know a white wall and me. <clears throat> I thought I'd jump on here today. Uh, do a review of a couple books that I've finished recently and talk a little about uh, those plans for the 500 subscriber uh, live show. For today, I wanted to talk about two books that have nothing to do with each other but uh, that I still kind of group together in my head uh, simply because of the kind of the backstories behind them and the themes behind them. So, books we're going to talk about today are David Quantic's All My Colors and <laughs> Dathan Arbach's Pen Pal. And I still don't know, after all these months, whether I'm saying his name correctly or not. I really wish someone would correct me and give me one of those, uh, you know, pronunciation things down in the comments or something. Dathan Arbach, that's how I'm saying it. It's probably wrong. I don't know. But uh, I'm grouping these books together because uh, in my head they are kind of both in the same realm as the new age uh, urban legends and myths that all go in that uh, wonderful category of creepypastas and conspiracies. So I love that sort of thing. Um, for those of you that don't know what a creepypasta is, it's essentially that. It's just, it's an urban legend of today's world, but uh, because us younger generation are weird and we think we're original we had to give it a stupid name so thus creepypasta but all my colors has to do with uh the mandala effect uh which is that uh sort of conspiracy and idea where uh people recall two totally different uh outcomes of an event uh, one of the most famous examples of this is where people argue whether it is the Berenstein Bears with an E or the Berenstain Bears with an A. Um, but there are a thousand other things. Uh, the name Mandela Effect every, actually came about because uh, there are many people who swear that back in the 80s, Nelson Mandela was assassinated uh, when in truth, he just passed away uh, fairly recently. So, a really interesting subject uh, if you have time to delve into it. But uh, this book kind of works into the Mandela Effect. And this book works into more of those creepypasta, urban legend types. Um, <clears throat> where it's just a good old-fashioned, almost, almost a campfire kind of horror feel to it where it's something that could absolutely occur and uh, just gets under your skin and it might sound weird to group those together but again I just I have this space in my head where um, all things like that are grouped in one spot and so that's where I put them and I figured I'd review them together because uh, one of them was wonderful and one of them was far less than wonderful so I'm going to start with one I did not enjoy, uh, simply so that we can end on a good note. Taking a cue from Kasha there, so thank you Miss Kasha. Um, so, 
David Quantic, All My Colors. Gorgeous cover. Love the cover. Very cool. Um, just looks terrific on any bookshelf. Um, and that is about the best thing that I can say about this book. It is about a man who is an absolute jerk. Everyone knows he's a jerk. He's written to be a jerk. Uh, and he does succeed in that very well. And his favorite thing to do is uh, have these other wannabe authors over. He is a wannabe author, but can't seem to write anything. Uh, he does, however, have a perfect memory. So he can read a book and recite it word for word years later. So at one of these parties where uh, it basically just amounts to him calling everyone stupid and making fun of them, uh, and then talking about how great he is, despite him not being any better than them, he starts reciting lines from this book called All My Colors, and very quickly realizes that no one else in the room has ever heard of this book or heard of its author. Um, so he kind of slowly starts formulating the idea that, well, uh, if this book supposedly doesn't exist, even though I know it does, then uh, why don't I just write it, slap my name on it, and make a bunch of money? Because in his mind, this was an award-winning book. It was a bestseller. Um, it was reviewed and loved by all. So he's like, hey, I'm going to take advantage of it then. No one else remembers this book. I do. And uh, so he does. Yeah, it gets really weird. <laughs> Not necessarily a good way. Uh, the story is also kind of boring because um, actually a large percentage of the book is just about the process of him slowly turning this thing into a book and then sending it to publishers and you know doing the stuff that uh, doing the stuff that writers normally do um, but it's just written in a very bland and boring way. Um, it might be better if you, uh, as a reader, liked the character at all, but you don't. So it just amounts to a couple hundred pages of listening to him whine and complain uh, until someone finally picks this book up and he becomes a big superstar. Uh, but then still nothing is happening, really. And, I mean, there's a couple little things on the side where you know something is slightly off but um again it's just you don't give a crap about this guy and so it's hard to care that uh his wife might be sleeping around with another dude um and by the time the big reveal comes around as to why he knows about all my colors and no one else does it's just i feel like it's so far out of left field that it just didn't work for me at all. It was a complete flop. Uh, so yeah, the book ended up being a waste of time for me and it sucks because, like I said, it looks great on the bookshelf, but that's that's about all it's good for. So All My Colors got one star from me. Um, and I'll say too on the front, it says that uh, this was written by the Emmy Award winning writer of The Thick of It and Veep. I haven't watched either of those shows. I don't really watch TV, but um, I would think that if he won an Emmy for writing the uh, the scripts of these, that he would have a better understanding of how to write an enjoyable novel, but uh, I guess not. So that's all I have to say about that one. Didn't enjoy it. Uh, do not recommend it. I don't know. Someone out there liked it, I guess. Uh, thankfully, Pen Pal, again, to use a younger phrase, it lived up to the hype. I've been hearing about this book for years and years and years. Um, it started out as this online thing where the author was just uh, slowly telling the story through, uh, through posts on a website. Um, and eventually, he uh, used Kickstarter to turn it into an actual book and it became huge. It has a massive cold following. People love this book. Um, it was one of the first books that I put on a to-buy list back when I made a to-buy list uh, way back in the day. 
um, and it's taken me this long to finally get it. Now, I'm going to get a little some coffee and then I'll tell you all about the book and why I'm going to suggest that you pick it up if you have not. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like this mug does not have the proper justice done to it uh, on camera. I'm trying to show you the right comparisons here, like, you know, hand to mug. Um, if I fill a coffee pot, if I, if I make a full pot, um, I can put about three quarters of a pot into this one mug. So, <laughs> and uh, it's, it, it was a great buy. I got it for like 10 bucks. But you're not here to listen to me talk about a coffee mug. So, let's talk about the book, huh? Okay, so, pen pal, Dathan Arbach. Um, this book is told in a slightly non-linear fashion uh, and it is about it is about a boy uh, kind of recalling events from his childhood uh, starting all the way back uh, in the beginning of his uh, elementary school years where they started this project to um, <clears throat> to write a letter, attach it to a balloon, and send it up in the air, uh, hoping to get letters back. And all these people start getting letters back uh, with, you know, pictures of where the balloon ended up and things like that, and, and basically becoming pen pals with these people who had collected the balloons. Well, our narrator, uh, he sends his up, and he, he gets, um, he gets something back, but uh, it's not a letter. It is just a bunch of pictures that don't really make any sense. Um, they're just obscure and shadowy, and you can't tell what's going on. As the school year progresses, um, he continues to get more and more and more of these letters from his pen pal, and never uh, are there any actual letters, no written words or anything, uh, just pictures and again all these pictures they don't seem to make sense they're just of you know blurry shots of trees and the sky and clouds and, and things like that you know um but as time goes on and as he gets a little older he starts to realize that maybe there is just a little bit more of these pictures uh, and a little bit more of this pen pal of his than he realizes at the start. Um, and along with this is uh, his friendship with this particular boy, um, which ends up playing a major part. Like I said, you start out from his childhood years and you move forward. Um, it's not necessarily linear. He uh, kind of steps back at times and uh, says, well, you know, now, 10 years later, I know this, and then let's jump back here to five years ago where this happened, which I can connect with this from when I was in elementary school. And you can see how that could be a little off-putting to some people, uh, but I would encourage you to stick with it because uh, the story told here, like I said, it's just, I think it is so horrific uh, because it is such a real horror. It is something that could 100% so easily happen to anybody and does happen. Uh, and obviously not in the same circumstances, but in very similar circumstances. Things like this have happened in the past and are happening in the present day to day. Um, and that is part of what makes it so scary that, um, that this young boy can do something so innocent and it turn into it's horrific and uh and it's written in a way that feels very it feels very real it feels like you are actually uh reading the notes reading the diary almost of this narrator um and it's it's a very intimate approach and again it just it works uh, there's a level of there's a level of fear in this book that uh, just creeps up on you, and if you will let yourself be lost in the story, 
along with our narrator, then the little things that uh, maybe don't add up quite as well, you're not going to care by the end because you're going to be so invested in this story. And um, I'll tell you, it, it does a fantastic job. I, I've read horror for a very long time. It's harder to do something that effectively scares me or creeps me out. And I feel like Pen Pal uh, succeeds in that realm. It just, it's effective. Um, it's not the same old, same old kind of thing. Uh, it is just a good old fashioned real life horror brought to life and you're going to zoom through it page by page. You're not going to want to put it down. Mr. Auerbach, he, um, he just does a phenomenal job here of bringing the horror, of not letting up, and uh, most importantly of giving a very terrifying and satisfying conclusion. So awesome awesome book here five stars easily i will very much recommend this book to others um, i know a lot of people have read it uh, like i said this book has a cold following and for good reason so again highly suggest this book if you have not read it do yourself a favor pick it up i don't suggest this book if you have it give it to goodwill or somebody that uh, you pretend to like but don't really like and let them waste time reading it and that will do it for the book reviews and uh, now just briefly I kind of want to talk about that live show that I plan to do I haven't done anything like this before so I'm a little lost here um, I'm hoping to get a little a uh, little help a little direction from uh, from a few of you that have so uh, expect me to be reaching out because I'm very much lost when it comes to anything involving technology uh, that said, my current intention is, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking April 9th, which is a Saturday, um, and it's a few weeks away from now. It gives, uh, gives me some time to, uh, do some last minute planning to get, uh, a couple items in that I need to get in, um, and to hopefully play around with the whole live thing on YouTube so I can figure it out in time and it doesn't become a disaster. Um, it also gives you folks a couple weeks to uh, maybe open up your schedules a little for me. Now, this is a tentative date right now of April 9th. Um, you guys let me know down below uh, what you're thinking, if, uh, if there's a date that uh, works better for some of you um, time-wise. Again, I don't necessarily have anything set. Um, it's probably going to be you know closer to afternoon here but not so far into the evening that uh that you know you guys living in other time zones are just unable to uh join whatsoever uh, i'm trying to find a happy medium somewhere in there so i'll be thinking about that um but again just let me know your thoughts below um and i think that'll do it for this one so You've had your book reviews, you've had uh, my current read, you're gonna get your cat footage. Get him, buddy. Get that straw. Show him who's boss. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, so scary. Hmm? There's a kitty on I'm kitty on I'm kitty on us. Come on. No, not even a little bit. What? What? Too strong. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Got him a new water thing.
trying to teach them to drink out of it. Havoc would rather drink out of that cup. But I figured if I set the cup beside the drinking thing, they would get it. So far, they're just ignoring the fancy machinery and drinking out of the cup instead. Oh, good catch, buddy. Are you being cute over here, Chaos? Hi. You're all the mess on the floor, guys. We are in. We're in constant construction mode around here. Hence all the random tools. <clears throat> Hi. What are you doing, buddy? Jealous. I'm jealous. You gonna get in your box, huh? Havoc. Oh, buddy. Oh. Oh, goodness. And that'll do it for this one. So I'm going to be back in my next video. I think I'm going to, uh, actually, I think I'm going to finish this one up and jump right into a tag video. So don't be surprised if you see me in the same get up with the same coffee mug in the video following this. Because uh, I'm kind of playing catch up from that, uh, that wonderful vacation that Paige and I took. So thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think of these two books. Drink great coffee, as always. Read some awesome books. And more importantly, tell me about those awesome books down below because I'm always looking for recommendations. And that's all. Thank you. Stay safe. Have a great day. Cheers.